All right, well, Cornell Williams Brooks is the president and CEO of the NAACP, the nation's oldest and largest civil rights organization, and he joins us now from Washington. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Cornell. So let's talk a little bit about this. We have five police officers killed last night by snipers during what was supposed to be a peaceful protest in Dallas. Yes. Six more wounded, including a civilian also wounded. What is the mm. message that you have for the people of Dallas this morning? Our message on behalf of the NAACP branch in Dallas and the 2,200 branches that we have all across the length and breadth of this country is that this is a moment of grief and resolve. Uh, our hearts go out to the citizens of Dallas. Our heart goes out to the Dallas Police Department and certainly the families of those five officers, officers who lost their lives beside peaceful protesters who were standing up for justice. It speaks well of the police officers that they were there. It speaks well of our Constitution that you have protesters and police officers standing together. It speaks well of the country that we are all standing together in our grief. So we can both pursue uh, an end to police mis uh, misconduct and police brutality even as we stand with law enforcement uh, who've lost five of their own who are doing their jobs on the streets of Dallas bes beside peaceful protesters. So we stand with Dallas, we stand with those families, and we stand together as Americans. You know, President Obama uh, spoke about uh, police deaths, and he said, you know, there's no possible justification for targeting these police officers who are doing this hard work, um, it, it putting their lives at risk, essentially. And you talked about standing together. But I wonder, are you concerned that an incident like this may just divide us more? Maybe the result may be more divisiveness between law enforcement and the, pol the people that they protect. Well, we have to be clear. We stand against police misconduct. We do not stand against the police categorically. We have members of law enforcement who stood with the NAACP as we stood for the highest standards for law enforcement as a profession. There is no contradiction between standing with police officers, protecting our communities, and standing against police misconduct and police brutality. We believe that policing can be carried out in a way that extends respect to the community, that ensures that people are able to work and recreate and enjoy their communities without being in fear of the police. These two things are not in contradiction. Right. So, but there, there is a problem. And, uh, you know, the president pointed it out, um, ironically, in the speech he made right before uh, the speech that he made this morning. He talked about a set of racial disparities that exist in our criminal justice system and called the shootings of, uh, of uh, and, uh, the shootings that he, that, funnily enough, the shootings that the demonstrators were protesting against, he called it a very American issue. This is a loaded question because there are so many reasons why we are here today. But mm. how do we begin to tackle this problem, this problem between law enforcement and minority communities? Well, well, first of all, we have to appreciate the fact that we do indeed have a problem. The death of Mr. Sterling, the death of Mr. Castile, the death of 500 people in police custody this year, the fact that a young African-American is 21 times more likely to lose his life at the hands of the police than his white counterpart. It is a huge and profound problem. That being said, we can, at the federal level, pass the In Racial Profiling Act, pass the Law Enforcement Trust and Integrity Act, at the state level, pass racial profiling laws, ensure more integrity in these investigations. The fact of the matter is the NAACP, for example, in Ferguson, pushed for and passed a racial profiling law in that state that allowed that police department to be held accountable. We as a country are well able to address this problem. When we come to the realization that when law enforcement sees an American wrapped in black skin and that skin represents a cloth of vulnerability and victimhood and when they look at a white American they see them robed in credibility and robed in, 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 in respect that's a racial disparity that we cannot tolerate that's unconscionable we have to see Americans as Americans and extend respect with protection toward them that we can do. There are police departments in this country that do this. 
the majority of law enforcement officers extend this kind of respect, but for the bad apples, we have to go after them, we have to hold them accountable, and we have to hold those police departments accountable. This is a problem that we can address and we can solve. The NAACP, bear this in mind, we came into being over 100 years ago to fight a form of racialized violence called lynching. We brought it to an end. In this century, we can bring to an end a form of racialized violence called police misconduct. We can do it with law enforcement. We can do it with Americans of conscience who understand the precepts and principles of the Constitution and are willing to follow them. We can do this together. We need not be divided at but, all. But isn't this also a matter of changing people's hearts and their perceptions? And is there, there's no law that you can pass that will do that. Oh, there, there are in fact laws that we can pass that help do that. For example, we can train our police officers to engage the community in ways that are respectful, in ways that do not presume that every African American is the object of suspicion as opposed to a subject of protection. We can pass laws that ensure that we collect data to know how police officers are doing the work that they are charged with doing. So it's a matter of both changing laws and changing hearts. We can change hearts in terms of helping people to see people as people, but we can change laws to ensure that policing means that people are in fact treated as people and citizens, deserving of respect and deserving of constitutional protections. Mm -hmm. You know, the deaths of uh, the death of Alton Sterling and uh, Philando Castile have sparked a lot of anger and reignited that conversation about racial bias. Um, how can reactions to these tragedies be harnessed into something productive? Uh, what are you guys doing on the ground in terms of as an organization? So, on the ground, one of the things that we do, among the many things that we do, is that we organize people to not only protest, not only demonstrate, not only go to prayer vigils, but also to vote, also to plan, to also work with law enforcement, public policy uh, officials, elected officials, to get legislation passed, to bring about reform, to bring about a change in policing in this country. And so it's a matter of demonstrating in the streets, voting at the polls, working behind closed doors, working with law enforcement, bringing the leadership together and getting things done. The NAACP, our 2,200 branches across the country, we are at ground zero when it comes to police misconduct. And we understand it's not enough to, to issue press statements, it's not enough to offer up sound bites, it's not enough to come together in grief and tragedy. We have to work together in a disciplined, fashion presupposing that we as a country are well able to solve this problem. All right, That well, I believe we can do. Uh, the, uh, the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division is going to be handling Alton Sterling's case in uh, Baton Rouge. You say that uh, Philando Castile's case should be handled that way as well. Why do you think that? Well, the Justice Department, particularly the Civil Rights Division, under the, the leadership of Benita Gupta and certainly Attorney General Lynch, uh, has credibility in the community. And when the Justice Department comes in, it ensures the integrity of concurrent uh, investigations at the municipal and state level. Uh, it helps everyone understand that there's a watchful eye, if you will, uh, overlooking these investigations. And it is reassuring to the public. That being said, we cannot outsource the responsibility for conducting fair, transparent, and expeditious investigations to Washington. Those on the ground in Baton Rouge, uh, in Minnesota, have to do the work that needs to be done. Uh, this is a moment where we need uh, the, those at the highest levels of state and municipal government, government to do their jobs. Uh, we cannot rely on the Justice Department alone, but the fact that the Justice Department is involved, is being called upon, speaks to the work that they do and how well they do it but also the need for it to be done. You, said, you have said that uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton need to, quote, clearly state their commitment to address uh, criminal justice reform and the issues of racial profiling. What do you need to hear from them? Well, the NAACP issued a report uh, more than a year ago called Born Suspect. We articulated a set of recommendations for the country in terms of passing racial profiling laws. We need to hear from both presidential candidates 
so that such that they are speaking to these issues specifically. Uh, we are asking that both candidates come to our national convention in Cincinnati and stand flat-footed before the delegates of the NAACP and the nation and articulate their positions. Because, be clear, this is a moment for leadership. This is a trying hour in this country. And anyone who is seeking the highest office in the land needs to come before the NAACP and lay out their positions with respect to law enforcement, racial profiling, police misconduct, uh, and in this country at that, this hour. Because uh, this is a, an occasion where it's not enough for people to talk around the issue. They need to speak to the issue. Um, so we're looking forward to hearing uh, from both Secretary Clinton uh, and Mr. Trump in Cincinnati. That's our invitation. That's our call. Uh, and we're hoping to uh, hear from both of them. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't help but to feel, uh, maybe it's just the fact that we've had so many incidents in such a short time, really less than a week. You can't help to feel that things are spiraling out of control, are they? And then, no, they're not spiraling out of control. We retain the ability to determine our own destiny as Americans. Is there reason to feel as though we are in the midst of a uh, ongoing funeral? Um, for the victims of police misconduct, for these five police officers, the 500 people that have been killed thus far in police custody this year, uh, indeed. But we've not buried our determination. We've not buried our courage. We've not buried our resolve. We're well able to take on these challenges. And what you will see in Dallas is people coming together. But what you've seen in Baton Rouge, what you've seen in Minnesota and St. Paul, is uh, the same coming together, the same resolve, the same determination. Be clear, we have a young generation of millennials um, who are in the streets along with their parents and grandparents standing together, coming together to bring about an end uh, to police misconduct. And so given the energy we see in the streets, the activism we see in the streets, a commitment to go to the polls, we believe we as the NAACP believe that we're well able to come together and come to grips with this problem in this hour. You know, you say that, and I'm just looking at uh, the front page of the Washington Post today, and their uh, headline has to do with deadly shootings by police on the rise in 2016. In the first six months, uh, there's been an increase, and they also say that uh, that the, sh the shootings of police officers on duty has also increased as well. Do you think across the country there's an issue with police training or the vetting of police recruits? Do you think there needs to be an overhaul across the board? Absolutely. So there's a challenge with respect to the training of police. There is a challenge with respect to the recruitment and screening of police. But there's also a challenge with respect to the certification of police departments. When you go to the grocery store and you pick up a carton of organic milk, it is certified. Our police departments, unlike uh, cartons of food, are not certified. Uh, we need that. We need a national standard for excessive use of force. Uh, we need standards with respect to police departments. We need better data. What we know is this. There are places in the country that get it right, that are doing a better job, and that we can, in fact, in fact address this problem. But we have to approach the problem with both our heads and our hearts. That is to say, uh, hearts of resolve and determination, but heads focus on specific strategies, specific reforms, specific legislation, specific training. When you do that, you can bring about change. And that, I believe, that the country, the NAACP, and certainly uh, a nation of voters and activists and demonstrators and police officers are well able to do. Cornell, before I let you go, no doubt there will be more demonstrations uh, this week, uh, probably this weekend. What do you have to say to people who are concerned about heading out there? What do you have to say? What should parents say to their children? A lot of people brought their children to the demonstration in Dallas. What should parents say to their children about what's happening? I believe our parents have to say to their children, that there are moments in history when we're all called upon to demonstrate courage. When you go to a protest and stand up for what you believe and stand with the 
stand under the convictions of conscience and the Constitution, you are bettering the country. It's a demonstration of courage. Likewise, when law enforcement stands with protesters who are protesting peacefully to ensure their protection, they too are demonstrating courage. I believe that protests, voting, activism, are expressions of American character. I would not discourage my children from participating in peaceful protests, and I don't think any parent in this country should discourage, but rather encourage their young people, their children, their sons and daughters to participate in peaceful protests, particularly during this trying hour of American history. This is a post-millennium civil rights movement, and we all need to play our part. We all need to step forward because this is a moment for an expression of American character. It's not enough to vote at the polls. We also need to demonstrate in the streets. All right, Cornell William Brooks, president and CEO of the NAACP, thank you so much. Thank you.